Our guest Pavik Harya, a London-based musician, has been performing since 2008 to audience ranging from 40 to 40,000. He has captivated listeners from a very young age. Pavik's musical mission is to keep bhajan alive and inspires the next generation. Let's welcome to our guest Pavik and talk about his bhajan style and his musical journey. So Bhavik, welcome. And how are you? I'm very well, thanks. Thank you so much for hosting this interview and taking your time out to to share this story. No, that's great. So Bhavik, before you start talking about your journey, can you please explain what is bhajan and uh, what is different about this this style of music? Yeah, so I I think um Bhajan's developed with the bhakti movement a long long time ago, you know, thousands of years ago with the the scriptures, the the legendary epics, the teachings of the saints. There's so much that comes with this this um this heritage and it, it's a devotional or spiritual song mostly known as a bhajan, normally sung in a satsang which is a collective of people coming together um and most of them have easy to to sing choruses so people can can join in and sing along together um i mentioned religious and spiritual that's you know that i believe there's bhajans are a lot more than those two words um and i've got here some notes that i've written down you know listening to to bhajans helps me connect with my inner self um and in the the really hectic world that we live in today for me it's it's medicine it helps me pause it helps me uh, re-energize and reconnect with my inner self and and really forget about what's going on and and it's it's really therapy it's it's, it's one form of medicine um as well and and the calmness it brings me obviously it has different w- effects for everyone else but yeah spiritual devotional energetic um there's just this energy that you get from it which is That's is my my description right yeah. So let's talk about you now. So you are brought up in London in yeah, surrounded by western up. culture. And yet you have chosen this very authentic very ancient style of music. So how did you get inspired to, you know, take this path? Yeah, great question. Actually, a lot of people think I'm from India and and I've come across here um but it's 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 all from the family and it, all the credit goes to you know my my mom my babaji my granddad and my baba and every every thursday my babaji used to go to this satsang it was the jalaram baba mandri um and every thursday they'd go to a different person's house and sing and you know one by one everyone would take a turn and sing sing a bhajan and i used to go along and i used to take my keyboard which was at that time probably like four times the size of me and i used to carry it around i've still got the keyboard today and um I just used to play. I just used to play and and make things up, make lots of mistakes, but that's the way that I learned and eventually they they told me to sing. I sung a few um and as they say the rest is history. So it definitely comes from from family um and and I'm so grateful to my parents and my family to that that pushed me to continue to to sing and to play the harmonium and a lot of it is self-taught, so I'm still learning as I go along, but Mm-hmm. your family is is the answer to that right and what was their reaction like you know when you started performing um it was it was it was great they pushed me uh, they pushed me to do it so you know for family events i'd i'd sing a few and then um some other extended family would ask me to to sing some prarthnas and to sing uh, some bhajans and maybe even some bollywood songs and that's how it started that's how it grew and and their support obviously is is the reason that i'm here today um but yeah it was it was just you know one person heard it they shared it they they spoke to their friends um and that really was was the the best experience that i could have have because you know singing in front of audience in front of people even if it's in a living room um is just is is such an amazing feeling to be able to share with people no that's great so i also wanted to know about your training so besides uh learning singing did, did do you have to learn other things like learning instrument Um so harmonium actually is self taught so okay. I'm learning as I go along um and with the musicians that I play with they always give me some tips and some some ideas some new chords maybe um but yeah so I I've I've learned from a few different teachers um mostly I learned from someone called Karnik Shah who is in Baroda 
Oh, okay. Holidays, I used to go there for, for six weeks for the summer holidays. Um, that was mainly for, for, for training, and um, I'm Jane myself, so I was learning lots of Jane stubbins and materials for like Burushan and different festivals, um, as well as other bhajans as well. So that's that you know, that's what gave me the real boost when I was there in 2009. I made a CD in 2010, I went back, I made another CD, and you know, 10 years ago, that was last year, so a great milestone. Um, but that really catapulted my journey, and it was a, a really good experience at that age, you know, learning how music works in, in a different country, how the production side of it works. So lots of experience, and it's all thanks to the, the people that have supported me and all these teachers as well. No, that's great. Um, so I just wanted to ask you, um, when I was learning about you, I was looking in one of the video, you have mentioned that Generally, bhajans are associated uh, with like religious ceremony or in a sad occasion or generally the audience is quite elderly. But what you are trying to do is your mission is to take bhajans to a younger audience mm -hmm. and keeping the you know bhajan style alive. So what are your plan, how you are planning to achieve this and how you, you know, what are the obstacles you are having yeah. in order to That's achieve your goal? Question. So the the whole mission and project I've I've got I've called it keep bhajans alive, and um, it's to be honest it's something that I've wanted to work on for a long time. But you know work, family, life always gets in the way of of these passion projects I guess. Um, but lockdown, the first lockdown in March 2020 allowed me to to stop because my work came to a halt, um, and then I started going live on YouTube, on Facebook, on Instagram, and this following slowly built and. Then I started thinking, actually, this is the perfect time to educate the, the world on actually what bhajans are, what it means to me. I started asking people what it meant to them. A lot of the younger generation didn't really respond at all. And then that made me dig deeper. And actually, I asked a lot of the people around me, a lot of my friends and their friends about bhajans. And what you mentioned at the start, you know, it's it's sung when someone passes away or only the older people sing it. Those are the responses I got. And the other common one was, um, I don't know what they mean. So I don't like them because I don't know what they mean. So I used all of that together to put together this hashtag keep virgins alive. Right. Um, that led to producing an album called Roots and Changes. And um, the plan is just to keep keep spreading this music. And the way that we are trying to bring it to today's generation is by fusing the music. So bringing together different sounds from all around the world. Um, yes. But the really crucial thing is not losing that heritage, that history, That's that right. rich, rich culture. So in the album, you know, it features a saxophone, it features a piano, it features a drum kit. And traditionally in a virgin, you, you, you wouldn't really hear that. You'd hear lots of tablas, lots of manjiras, uh, lots of singers. So it's, um, it's a really fine line that we're trying to, to, to bridge or yeah, to cross and the only way it's going to work is by experimenting. And that's what we're trying to do with, with this music. Um, across the last two years, I've run this Thursday show called Bhajans with Bhavik. It's been mostly every, every Thursday in the last two years. And that's just been my way of giving back. So I would come live. Um, and I've seen over the last two years, the following. At the start, it was more the older generation. And it still is. That population is still there but an increase in the younger generation. And for me, that's really, really satisfying. And it's a, a great sign that all this hard work is, is slowly paying off. Yes. Um, and even making content, you know, it's a, it's a very small thing, but it's actually, it creates a huge ripple effect. Like the video you watched, you mentioned. Yes. Me speaking yes. About, about what I found out when I did that research. Um, and that's got a lot of response to that as well, like that. So yeah, you are going step forward towards achieving your goal by adding the Western style of music in it. Yeah, that was my that's second that's question. Part of it. There's, there's so many more ideas and, and concepts and I, I think collaboration and, and world music is, is such a big, big space. Um, you know, you could have a, a Spanish music production for a version album. You could have a West, like a, an Africa. There's so, so many opportunities. Yes. Um, and the beauty with, with bhajan or devotional music or spiritual music is every culture has their own. So imagine if one day we could create this multi-faith, 
devotional spiritual album yeah, brilliant you know, so th- there's so many so many opportunities that's why for me this keep virgins alive thing is is a lifetime project it's not something absolutely that's overnight or in a few months yes and so that's what my my next question is that there is a special link between bhajan hindu religion spirituality so if you can just tell us more about your personal thoughts how it really, really interlinks i think i think it's completely different for for everyone for example you might you know you might meet someone who maybe doesn't really follow their religion so they for example they're they're a certain religion but they don't practice it fully um but they can still appreciate the music they can still use it to to heal or to mourn or to celebrate so i think it's it's for me it's it's as i mentioned earlier it's it's an energizer it's a way to recover to celebrate all of these different things and at different times in in your life you're going through different things and it's it's always there t- in in one way or another to to help so i think it it, it always connects um but you don't necessarily have to be spiritual or religious to listen and enjoy this music it's 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 um it's uh, what's the word it, you know it applies to all it's it's accessible Quite versatile yeah Quite well yeah absolutely versatile and the other thing that um coming back to your previous point about the the plan to to make the younger generation understand and and um what's the word to yeah to understand and to really be inspired by this music is is taking it that next step and translating the bhajans so writing the the meaning of them in english wow. as we're performing them so last year in may there's an organization called subrang arts in london and they hosted this festival with one of the councils and it was all about gujarati influences and they approached us to host the concert which is actually where the name roots and changes came from okay vision is called roots and changes and they very kindly allowed us to continue that and the for that concert we we pre-recorded that because it was in lockdown and it was a a 90 minute bhajan concert we filmed it at a beautiful temple in wembley and then we had the entire concert transcripted in english wow and that i think you know within 24 hours reached like 25000 views and the amount of comments we received um just about i now know what that bhajan means or actually this means something else i thought it meant that but it meant that and this you know some small pockets of education like this is the way forward yes there there is a barrier there of time of expertise to put it together and you know the biggest one of cost yes there's a lot of um friction with with devotional music or spiritual music or whatever you want to call it you know if if i was to put together a bollywood a bollywood show next week with my eyes closed i'd find someone to sponsor it but when you talk about bhajans and devotional there's something there which i don't know what it is but my goal is to try and break through that barrier no that's true yeah. so no very well done and um i was going to ask you uh, that who is your favorite bhajan artist and which song is your favorite as well wow. i know it's a difficult question <laughs> yeah there's too many there's too many um i'll name a few um suresh wadkar i love um i just i i just so inspired by his voice every time he opens his mouth um the desai family so ashit and hema desai oh, yes. and alap desai you know one of my favorites i listen to them all the time and then there's of course some bollywood singers who playback singers who sing who sing devotional music um jagjit singh jagjit singh ji oh, yeah. his ghazals his krishna ghazals and those dons and those kirtans um there's there's too many to mention no that's true yeah yeah in terms of favorite version again there's um th- there's a huge list but the one that always comes to mind is one of the first ones i learned and it's from a film called lagan oh yes palan hari opa yeah. and uh, which other style of music uh you like as well which you enjoy listening to and yeah. um I I I I love listening to Guzzles. Um again, I've got different music my favorite, yeah. moods and different, you know, times of the day. Um but yeah, the Guzzles for me, I love singing. I love listening to more more than singing and um the older Bollywood Bollywood classics, you know, classics. the, the cla- yeah, the classics which ever, you know, the evergreen which are always at the forefront of every performance we do. Um 
Ras Garba also I love. The thing about Ras Garba and Bhajans is you can you can add your own twist. That's right. Change the complete tune with the same words and it would still sound so beautiful. Whereas with a, a Bollywood song you've you've pretty much got to sing it how it was sung. Yes. Singing. So yeah, Ras Garba I definitely I definitely love. I love that it's just the energy when people are dancing, you've got a, a big team of musicians and and just that the vibrations you get from that I think are, are amazing. The positive energy you get, yeah, that's great. And uh, I also want everyone to know your coming, you know, if you can explain your coming events or how can they access your music, uh, if you can just uh, tell a little bit more about it. Yeah, absolutely. So um, all of our latest music is on all of the streaming platforms, so Spotify, Apple, Amazon, um, all of the major ones, and also on YouTube. Um, Every Thursday we host a Bhajan show, Bhajans with Bhavik, and it's one hour, nine o'clock UK time. Um, and every week we get three, four hundred people joining us. So come and join us and, and listen and send me a request. Um, yeah, all social media channels, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. You can reach out to me and I respond to everything. It's not someone else doing it. Um, so if you have any questions about Bhajans, about a particular one, about how you can help me spread this mission, I'd love to hear from you. And... Um, the final thing was upcoming upcoming events. Um, yes. So on the 5th of uh, and 6th of February, we have a the Roots and Changes live tour in the UK. So the 5th of February is in Leicester at yes. the beautiful Sioux Townsend Theatre. And that's in the evening. And then 6th, which I've just heard today, is sold out, which is in London. Great news. Um, yeah. So I'm so happy about that. So that's on the, the Sunday, the 6th of February. So that's great. Now, if you could please um, sing a little bit uh, version for us, that'd be great. Yeah, I'll, I'll do the I'll do Lagan, which I mentioned, one of the first ones that I learned. Oh, palan hari, nirgun aur nyare, tumre bin hamera. Thank you very much um, for your time and joining us and explaining what Bhajan is and all the very best for the future. And I hope you achieve your goal, you know, as early as possible. And all my support is always there for you. Thank you. So, so really appreciate, see you on. appreciate your time. You know, it's it's people like you who are giving up your time and, and helping me spread this mission. Truly appreciate it. Thank you. So you know, we are all in together. <laughs>